Hi, I'm Tim Gunn, and this is how it got better. I grew up in Washington, D.C. in the 1950s and 1960s. And Washington is and was a very conservative place. And I knew from a very early age that I was an odd kid out. I was the kid who came home frequently beaten up, bloody, black eye, all scraped and bruised. I was a natural magnet for being picked on. I just was. There was the stutter. There was the bookwormish aspect of me. There was the fact that I wasn't a sports guy. I mean, you throw the dodgeball at me, and I'm like this. I, I mean, I was a classic nerd. My father was, I, I'll, I'll be blunt, he was homophobic, and I would hear it in the house. There was a lot of pressure on me to be like he was, and that pressure wasn't external, it was, it was internal, it was coming from me as well. I thought I need to be like dad, but somehow I felt more like mom. I had no sense of sexuality as a child and even as a teen, no sense of sexuality at all. If anyone were to ask, I would say I'm a neuter or I'm non-sexual. I knew I wasn't attracted to women, and I was afraid to be attracted to men. A lot of that was fear, I know. I didn't know what to do with sexual feelings, and quite frankly, I thought that they were bad and should be beaten back, and they made me decidedly uncomfortable. It was a period of, of tremendous questioning and tremendous anxiety. The first real awareness that I had of LGBT activism was Stonewall. And by then, I was a maturing teen. I was tremendously antisocial. I felt very exposed. I felt desperately insecure. And I hated the world. I reached a point in my teens where I just was, to be blunt, tired. I was tired of feeling so out of place in the world. I was tired of all the anxiety and emotional pain. I was just tired. And I thought, what's going to make tomorrow any different than today? The answer in my head was absolutely nothing. And I thought, I cannot, do not want to go on like this. I collected every pill that I could find in the house, and I took all of them that night. I was unconscious the next morning. My parents came. We went off to meet with the psychiatrist at Yale. I was there for two years and three months. It was a long haul. When I was hospitalized, homosexuality was considered a disease. And in fact, there were young people, a little older than I, who were in the hospital because they were homosexual. That was yet an, another reason why I thought this has to be suppressed. I mean, I, I can't possibly awaken to these feelings. And then I met this incredible doctor, Philip Goldblatt, God bless him, who wouldn't let me run for myself. And he was with me five days a week, Monday through Friday. And I lashed out, I got violent. He was there. He was, he was this immovable rock, and he was not going anywhere. And as soon as I was resigned to that, I began to engage with him, trust him, open up to him. I owe my life to him. I, do, I truly do. In my early 20s, I was visiting the Corcoran, and I became aware that there was a school in the museum, a museum school. And I took a summer class. I have never experienced anything that was so unshackling and liberating in my entire life. I found out that I not only really was very good at it, at these various things, but that I loved them, that I had a passion for them, that I had this drive. It made me feel prepared to be in this world and to be an active participant in it. It's the first time that I was around a lot of people whom I knew were gay and were, I won't say overt, but open. I, suddenly I was flying, flying without looking over my shoulder and discovering that the answer isn't in the back of the book. The answer's in you. I had 
my first relationship. And it was a moment that still puts a smile on my face. I become extremely aware of my sexuality and of the fact that I, in fact, am gay. And I don't flee from it. I'm not afraid of it. I'm very matter-of-fact about it. I took a train to New Haven, Connecticut, had made an appointment with, with Dr. Goldblatt, and presented him with, with my very own gayness. And he gave me a huge hug. I needed my great mentor, this man who delivered me from so much evil. I wanted him to know how, how high I had ascended. Just what a full person I had really become. Because I believe without that aspect of ourselves, we're not full. But I was and am full. We are in Midtown Manhattan, and we are in my showroom with my Tim Gunn collection. When you have something that you really love and are passionate about, explore it. You may become incredibly good at it. And those accomplishments, they're like badges and badges of courage and they help us navigate the world. And it gives you a sense of self-confidence and self-esteem that is invaluable. You, you can't possibly put a price on that.